Uh, hi, I'm Radu. Uh, I work at Sematext, um, and uh, there I do search consulting, mostly on Elasticsearch. I also work on this uh, logging product. That's why I'm a logging geek. Uh, it's also built on top of Elasticsearch, um, and I uh, <coughs> also co-authoring Elasticsearch in Action. And before I start, I just want to ask you, uh, like, how many of you are already using Elasticsearch or have played with it or something like that? Can I get? Oh, so quite, a, quite okay. How about Lucene or Solar? Okay. And other search technology? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then I guess a lot will will sound familiar. Um. So. Not sure how many of you have brought laptops or want to use them, but later I want to give a bit of a demo on how to do some stuff with Elasticsearch. And if you want to join me, uh, it would be great. Um, at one point, I will just uh, have more nodes in my cluster and I'd like to invite you to join. So if you want to do that, just go to elasticsearch.org slash download and get the get the tar archive and unpack it and we'll pick it up from there uh, if you don't want to do that the all the commands that are run here will be uh, you can fi find them on github we'll have the presentation up and everything so c can you still hear me on the back okay because i'm like uh <laughs> so um all right so just just to search uh, to start with uh, with a bit of an overview um this is how i see elasticsearch in my mind there's if you have a bunch of data you can send it send it over you can elasticsearch can store it for you you can uh, it can index it for you and then you can do search and you can also do all sorts of statistics through facets um to index some data you uh, you'll probably use the rest api that means your documents will get yeah, will be JSON documents and you'll send them over to HTTP. Um, search will go pretty much the same way. You will send your re uh, search requests in JSON over HTTP. You'll get back the the results in JSON. And there are quite a lot of features around search, as you'd expect. It's a search engine. Um, I'll just give you a few examples. So, as you'd expect from a search engine. Uh, you will get uh, results sorted by relevance if you want to. Uh, you can get autocomplete uh, and <laughs> other, uh, you know, goodies like did you mean or stuff like that. So you don't have to figure out in advance what you need to search for. And the really cool thing about it is that it scales by default. So if you just start indexing data without configuring anything, uh, by default, your first index will be broken into five shards. And uh, it will also try to replicate those five shards once. But if you just start with one node, that won't happen because it doesn't make any sense. But if you add another node, um, th they typically uh, see each other through a built-in mechanism, which is called discovery. For example, by default, uh, there's multicast discovery. So if you just start to two nodes in the same network, they will see each other, they will form a cluster. And once that happens, the first thing that is done is the five replicas that are just sitting there will get allocated to your second node. So basically, you'll have two copies of your data. You'll have more availability. And also, your searches will round robin between the sh primary shards and the replicas. So you'll get more uh, concurrent searches. And then you can add some more nodes. And again, they will join the cluster. And what happens from this point on is that uh, those shards and replicas will get balanced across your cluster. So automatically, some of the shards from <coughs> the first two nodes will get migrated to the third one. And it can also scale back. Like if, you, if a node goes down or if you just take it down, the first thing that happens automatically is some of the replicas will get uh, promoted to primary shards so you can continue indexing and then uh, additional replicas will get created so that you you're back to uh, the state where you have the five shards and the five replicas now I'd like to start and show you uh, some some of the things that that you can do with Elasticsearch and I'm just gonna tell you in advance what I'm gonna do 
the first is the install, and if you already got your uh, Elasticsearch package and untagged it, you're pretty much there. Um, then I want to show you how to index a document, how to retrieve, update, and delete. Um, then I want to show a bit about searching and faceting for getting uh, you know, a bit of, a st of statistics. Then I want to show how to scale up the thing that I just uh, looked at. And in the end, I want to talk a bit about performance and monitoring. So, OK, I just have my um, Elasticsearch uh, unpacked here. I want to um, do a bit of a configuration change because I, I would like to I would like to disable the multicast discovery I talked about in a bit because I want to be alone in my cluster for now. And now to start Elasticsearch, you just say bin Elasticsearch. I'd say minus F for foreground. See what's going on. Error. Thank you very much. Well, it's a demo. It has to be an error somewhere, right? Um, and this is where it listens to. So. I should be able to check if it works. Yay, I have my node up. So to index of our first document, I will just do a put request to my address. Let's say one index blog post. So I'll say blog posts is my first document. I'll come back to what these things are in a minute. Um, and then I'll put my JSON document here. Let's say title introduction to Elasticsearch. Please work. Yay! I've got my first document in. And now I just want to talk a bit about this bit here about what is a, an index, a type, an ID, and so on. So so an index is, um, if you're familiar with Lucene, you have an index is a bunch of shards, and a shard is a Lucene index. So uh, an index will provide you with a, a physical separation of your data. So if you have uh, data that you search independently, like say you search in your blog posts and in your products, and you want them physically separate, you can have multiple indices. You can also search across uh, multiple indices. There's no problem in that. Um, a type would be another level of a container that goes within the index. And the idea is, in the type, you have the definition of how your documents look like. The field, uh, every field in your document is defined there. And so you would use, um, you would use a type. So, ah, okay. So you would use uh, types to. Um, to divide different uh, documents with different uh, schemas, let's say. Um, so if you have, for example, posts and users, they will have different fields. You might want to put them in different types. And finally, the ID is something is a string that will uh, identify the document within the type within the index. And this uh, idea of having index, type, and ID is gives you the address of your document. And you can use that address to get a document, for example. Let's say. <coughs> If we do a get request on blog post one, there's the document. We can make it pretty, pretty er, and you can use the same address to uh, to update. So we'll just do a post request. And there's the update endpoint. And then I'll say, um, I want to add another bit of a document. I want to add a couple of tags. Let's say Elasticsearch in New York. There we go. So now the document is updated. And you can see that version is now two. It used to be one. Where are you? Used to be one. So 
version is something that you can use for concurrency control. So for example, uh, like we updated now, what happens uh, behind the scenes when you update is that it gets the current version of the document, it applies the changes you want it to, and then it puts the resultant document back. And now if someone else would, or you know, something would change the version in between, it will throw you an error and say, hey, the version has changed, and then you can retry or you can make it automatically retry or something like that. You can also use this address to to delete. If you want to delete a document, you will just say a delete request to Uh, but I don't really want to delete it because I have to, <laughs> to put it back. <laughs> but anyway, this is how the request would look like, and uh, this is how you can delete the whole type, or the whole index, or everything. Could you type higher on the screen, Sorry? Could you type higher on the screen to make it please? Oh, uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Huh? I'm afraid to type combinations <laughs> that I'm not <laughs> aware of. Uh, I'll just type it like this. <laughs> I don't wanna... <laughs> okay, I'll type high, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, yeah. Okay, so, um, so right, now let's do a search, because that's what it's all about, right? And again, you would put an address here, like where do you wanna search? Do you wanna search in one index, in multiple index, you can separate them by comma, do you want to separate uh, search in the type? In this case, I want to search in ev everywhere because that's all I got. Um, and let's say I want to search, I want to run a query for, uh, I'm looking for a term in the, in the field tags. And my t the term I look, I'm looking for is new. localhost there's no localhost and I'm going to take advantage of this to make it pretty thank you so now I got my document it, it found it even though it says New York and uh, I got my relevancy score here and now um, you know I searched for new I got New York because of analysis analysis is a process that will take the string a string like New York and break it into tokens so just to see how it works you can use an API called uh, analyze API so you can do something like this you give it the string and you can see it it got me new and York so that's why when I search for the n for new, it got I it found the document. Now let's say that we don't want to we don't want to um, to to get these partial matches. These are tags. We only want exact matches. So to do that, we have to change the mapping. The mapping is something that is attached to your type. So let's just see what the mapping looks like. Pretty. Right, so these are the, the fields that Elasticsearch uh, detected for me. I have two string fields. And um, what I want to do is to add something in this mapping and say, stop analyzing my tags. I want only exact matches. Now, in order to do that, I have to first delete the mapping, which will also delete my document, but I'll put it back. Okay, I'm going to delete my mapping. And now I'm going to put a new mapping that will tell not to analyze my tag. <coughs> um, so the mapping will be about posts. 
and we have the following properties. I want tags of type string. String is good. I want to say when you index not analyzed. Two, three, four. Hopefully, yes. So now, if I do, uh, if I repeat the search, you won't find me any documents because I ha I don't have the. Go on. Uh, so, like previous, we did a pull request in the last search. So I'm just uh, thinking: Are we using it as a database also, or? You can, you can also use it for, for storing the data. I think it kind of relates to a question that was asked earlier about if you want to use the search engine to also persist your data, you can. Um, I guess it depends on the exact use case if you, if this is the best place to store your data or not. But so how are you guys, do you guys do that as a database or is it like just a uh, For example, in the product that I'm working on, which is about indexing logs, we also use Elasticsearch for storing them. You're welcome. Right. So now, if I change my query to New York, it should work. Unless I did a typo. You didn't insert data. You didn't add to the I didn't add it, so that's why, yeah. Makes sense. Okay, let me add it back then. <laughs> So it's not because of the an analysis changes that the previous search didn't didn't find anything, right? So title tags search So now, the one that said new still doesn't return anything. The one that says New York should. Yay! <laughs> right, so now let's do, let's do a tag cloud. I mean, I won't do the actual tag cloud like this, but I just want to get the counts of what tags are more popular and what aren't, what tags aren't that popular. So. I'll use facets for this. So there's a facet that can just count the terms and tell me which are the ones that occur more often. So to do that, you would just do an ordinary search request. And if you don't specify any search criteria, it will just ma match everything. And I want to say my facets, you can put multiple facets here. I'm gonna just gonna have one that will be tag cloud. That will be my name. Um, and the facet will be of type terms. This will count my terms. And I wanna look in the field tags. No, pretty and clear. Right, so that's not very useful because we only have one occurrence of each tag. But if I put another document, title, let's say introduction to Hadoop. Tags, um, group, and New York, and yep. And now, if I rerun the facet, you you can see that New York appears twice, 
Hadoop once, Elasticsearch search once. So that should, if we have something to graph that, you will see the tag log. What did I want to say after that? Right, now on a scale, does everyone have Elasticsearch installed? You do? No? No one? Okay, then I'll do it by, my <laughs> by myself. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, okay. Which network are you on? Uh, guest? Yeah, I'm on there and I have, I have it installed. Awesome, it's so... I got it too. That's great. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to do is delete everything. <coughs> and please do that. So we can start from clean. Right. Um, I'm going to use a graphical tool to show you what's going on in the cluster. This tool is called uh, Elasticsearch Head. Mm -hmm. And it shows me something like this. This is my node that is already up. I'm just going to stop my node and do a configuration change to re-enable multicast so that we can see each other easily. Um, and also, I think it would be nice if you can put if you can give your node a name so that you know you can see your name up there or something like that. If you don't, it's fine. Elasticsearch will just make one name up for you. Are you using the default cluster name? Or did you yes, default cluster name. So these are the only changes that. Okay. So now, now it should be fine. Someone's there already. <laughs> but it doesn't, it kind of stalls. Why? It's the beauty of giving a demo. <coughs> Waited for 30 seconds. Oops. What about now? No. I'll just do this alone if you don't mind. <laughs> you be this had to restart the service. Sorry? Mine, mine's just coming up. Yours just coming up? Did you say it's killed out of the <laughs> it depends on the box, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, which one is it? Thank you. Okay. Right, so I'll just, you know, it started, we'll started for you? Yes. Should we try again? Okay, let's try again. So it may be the network, it may be anything. It still scales out of the box. <laughs> Ta-da! Well, our blog doesn't exist, but, you know. Mr. George, are you? Uh, are you <laughs> 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 okay, so um, let's just put an index right manually, because I don't want to default five shards. Local host. I'm gonna say product. Um, I want to remove this weird index there first. Thank you. Now it's green. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to put an index. Uh, without post. This is the index. Uh, and I want to say in my settings, settings that uh, number of shards. 
I don't know, 12. Instead of the 5 default. What did I... Stream core update. You don't have the same version as I am? Does everyone have? Let me just get back to something that I know works. <laughs> um, you can sh shut down nodes, huh? I shut it down, right? Okay. <sighs> yeah, I think it's a version issue. Yes, usually it's a version issue when that happens. But, you know, stuff happens. Okay, so I'm just going to start it again. So, <coughs> I, I mean, it's all the nodes need to be running the same version. Yes, of yeah. Okay. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> if you have nodes running different versions, they might not know how to communicate with each other. That might have caused the issue. Um, so I'll just start two nodes here. Um, and we'll pick it up from there. Movies and everything. Where did these come from? Right, so what do I have? Just one note. It's all going wrong, right? <laughs> well, I just got mine, so it's fine. No, no, I'm just I'm I've disabled multicast, or at least I hope I disabled it. have to well never mind you know I'm, I'm taking too much of your time so um, let's just as assume that we have a cluster there and if you want to put uh, an index with a custom number of shards uh, I think I've already done that but I got my exception so this is how it should work and then you would have huh f7 f5 right I have my index with a lot of shards and then but if you, uh, when you create the index, you kind of have to decide on the number of shards. Uh, that cannot be changed afterwards. Uh, but what you can change is the number of replicas. And you can just change uh, um, the settings of your existing uh, index. So we have a settings API here. Settings. And I'm going to say number of replicas. I'm going to set, set it to zero. So you can see now that my replicas have disappeared. And you can do that while your cluster is running. So if you, had, if you need more uh, concurrency or more availability and you add more nodes, you can just expand your, uh, the number of replicas while you do that. Um, Okay, so the last bit I'm going to talk about is uh, performance and monitoring. So about performance, you know, it's, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to performance. I just want to give you three things. Uh, one is about memory, because Elasticsearch is quite memory hungry. All, it has all those buffers and caches and so on. So uh, it's nice to give it to give it room. Uh, usually, a good start is to have. Um, half of your memory allocated to Elasticsearch and the other half you leave it for your operating system to cache your your indices that you have on disk. Um, then if you want to index fast the, th the best thing you can do first is to use the bulk API. This API which I'll show you in a bit uh, allows you to send multiple documents with one request so that saves you a lot of network coming and going. Um, and the last thing about searches that should help you is if you can use filters when you just need a yes or no whether whether something matches the criteria you're searching for or not. For example, uh, if you're searching logs, you probably want them sorted by timestamp anyway, so you don't care about relevancy. If you don't care about relevancy, then filters will be faster because 
uh, they don't calculate the score so that's uh, that's already faster and uh, because it's just a yes or no answer it can be easily cached so your subsequent queries will be a lot faster and these are muffin cups I've been pointed but I like muffins I don't drink coffee so I uh, just want to show you how we can do th these three things um, the memory settings are in where are they in bin If you if you use the tar archive, they're here. You can have this is the initial heap size, this is the maximum heap size, and you can tune that. Um, if you want to index multiple documents at, at one time, I'm just going to show you how you can do that. Um, I think it's post. It's post here. Yeah. say blog posts and then I use the bulk endpoint bulk bulk no bulk mm -hmm. um, and then the idea here is that you put your JSONs and you separate them via a new line and usually you have two two JSONs for every request if you have, uh, the one will say what you want to do. In this case, I want to index a new document. It can be an update, it can be a delete that will go in here. Um, and then you will, you will put some more information. In this case, I won't put anything because I already have my index there, my, uh, my type there. And if you don't specify any ID, it will uh, generate one for you. Um, and then a new line, and then on the next line, I will put the JSON with my document okay and then another new line and let's index just another document okay and finish with a new line and this should work so you can see it returns you an array and it tells you for every operation that it succeeded and all the information like this is the ID that was generated and so on. And the last thing about filters, you a filter will look pretty much like a query. So same search endpoint, same pretty, please don't forget. Um, but instead of a query here, I'm going to say filter. And again, I'm going to look about at a term. Uh, title intro. Doo -doo -doo. So it matched my document. You can see here <coughs> that the score is always one because it doesn't bother uh, calculating the score. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is monitoring. And you have quite a lot of APIs that will uh, tell you what's going on. The one that I want to show you is called Node Stats API. So if you just say, sorry, um, Node Stats PT. Nodex, there's no Nodex, nodes. And this will get you a lot of metrics about what's going on, like how much searching have you done, how much uh, time has spent there, uh, same about indexing, how big is your index, a lot of stuff. You can add mm -hmm. parameters that will tell you JVM statistics, uh, a lot of other metrics. Uh, if you need something visual to help you with that, uh, well, there's obviously this one, which will let you um, see see some something um, but if you want to see those metrics in particular you can use something called um, big desk which is again you just clone the repository you open index html and uh, then you connect to your cluster you select the node that you want to watch and it will start gathering metrics and you can see here uh, jvm stats all the things that i've i've talked about um, searches and so on 
If you want something more persistent, we have a product that's called uh, SPM. I actually have that installed. And we'll, these are the points where we started moving with the cluster nodes and so on. Uh, you also can gather lots of metrics and keep them for you. Um, and this is pretty much it. The progress bar is full. Uh, just just a quick look back. Uh, look at indexing, searching and analyzing. Uh, we tried to scale out. <laughs> and pretty much everything was done JSON over HTTP. And uh, yeah, that, this is pretty much it. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer, like now or later. So, why is Elasticsearch better than Solar, or how does it compare, or what plugins would you recommend it one or the other? I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. Uh, it's it's a bit of a flame war, <laughs> really. Um, well, uh, you have some uh, Elasticsearch has some stuff that uh, Solar doesn't, like this thing of uh, that should have worked about you know just adding another node by default, seeing each other and migrating shards and everything. Uh, Solar has some stuff that Elasticsearch doesn't, like shard splitting, for example. So, you know, it depends on exactly your use case, what what works best for you. So I wouldn't just blindly recommend one over the other. So I was gonna ask about the sharding. So you said when you set your shard size, you can't change the size of that? So what happens if you Nodes that exceed your shard size. You, you mean the number of shards? Yeah. Um, well, what you can do, um, yeah. So you have to plan that out. So you can you can just have uh, more shards. Mm -hmm. You can account for future growth. Uh, there are also it de depending on how your uh, use case actually looks like. For example, if you have logs, I keep coming back to that because it's my thing. Uh, if you have logs or any times time series data, you can have something like uh, one index per time interval, let's say one index per day. So then every day you create a new index and then you can decide that day how many shards you want. And that actually has a lot of advantages if you have time series data because you have a hot index that will be smaller if you index there, you know, a lot of stuff. But I think you can also use, uh, there's a alias. Yes, there's yeah, there's there are aliases. There's an alias API, so you, if you use that sort of uh, time series of all also, of it, if you break your data into multiple indices, you can also use aliases to see to say something like these are all my indices, and then when you run a search, if your alias is called all, you would just use all as your uh, as if it would be a real index, and it would search everywhere. Or you can have an alias that says latest and it will point to your latest index and when you add a new index you will just move the alias and your application will only look at the latest index. So that, that also should help. Uh, just a question. Um, so the nodes um, synchronize instantly, apparently. Um, what happens when you have nodes at really distant locations? Like in a different continent, is that is that advice to have? Uh, like not really. I mean, you can have some control over what's going on. For example, you can say uh, that uh, I don't want a shard and its replica to be on the same uh, continent or data center or rack or something like that. But I'm not aware of something that would be truly data center aware within Elasticsearch. So, um, so I get how all the different nodes find each other with the multicast in on a cluster. With multicast? Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I understand that. What I don't understand is once you've done that, how do you clients find the cluster and, and know which node to talk to? Well, uh, it depends on what you use for a client. In, in this case, if you use it over HTTP, uh, you can just uh, communicate to any of the nodes. And they're uh, all equivalent. Sorry. And they're all, they're all equivalent. So if you want to, yeah, when you index, it will redirect you to the correct node, something like that. You can also have, uh, you can configure nodes 
to not have any data. So if you have a lot of requests, you can have a node that to act as a load balancer. So it will not be bothered if you hit it with requests. Does that answer your question? Well, uh, just to yeah, yeah, I think I think you were first. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. I, forgive me if it's a naive question. If you have a lot of updates, how is that propagated to the replicants? Like, is there any guarantees for your clients um, when they get the, the timeliness of the data? Um. Yes. Um, so when you when you index something, you're, you're the first place where your indexing operation will go would be the primary shard. Mm -hmm. And then um, Elasticsearch has a transaction log. So uh, that uh, that will get replicated to, it, to all the shards and then the shards, the all of the replicas and then replicas will uh, index uh, the same documents. And by default, when you when you index the rep the operation returns only when all the replicas are uh, are done. But you can also say just uh, you can also have a parameter which is called async uh, replication or something like that, where you can just uh, say return only after the primary shard indexed. Um, just piggyback on that. Previous question. Uh, so if you, even if you knew that initial node, what, what if that node goes down? How, so you pr pr presumably you want to know at least a few backup nodes. To right, nodes. right. You can have a load balancer, or you can just, it depends on the client. Uh, if you have, there are some clients where... API for that? Yes. Take I mean, uh, you can, with a client, you can say, uh, you can define an array. With some clients, you can define an array of nodes, and it will just uh, round robin between them or connect to one, and if it doesn't work, Try the next one or something like that. Just want to follow up the impression thing that I just know. So, uh, when you write to your primary shirt, yes, replica to the other replica index, and then like, what if like you have the updates to a document, yes. at the same time do a search? So, would you see different results because these updates are going to get uh, uploaded? To all yes, the you will see different results. So how would you handle that? Thing? Uh, I don't know. I guess it depends <laughs> like what you actually want to have. Okay. So maybe a successful write is when it's get 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 replicated. Yes. Um, you what you can do is when you search, you can say preference and t tell it where you want, <coughs> which shards you want to hit first. You can uh, always prefer the primary shard, and that will get you the latest data. But then replicas will only be for backup. They won't. So it's always a trade-off, I guess. Thanks. In terms of memory, uh, I do understand it will depend on the data that is being indexed and served. Mm -hmm. uh, on typical Linux configuration, let's say server, what's your experience? How have you elaborated memory through configuration? Um, What's the question? So the question was. Uh, Okay, the, the, the memory requirements depend on the configuration, but what um, what would be the typical requirement, right? Uh, I don't know, it depends so much on not only how much data you have, but also how you query it. So for example, if you, if you do very expensive statistics, uh, it, will, it will load a lot of data in memory so it can compute it faster. It's called a field cache. And that is, you know, can get really big, even if you have, if you don't have that much data. So it really depends a lot on how you use it, how you use it. Um, I don't know if you have something like, uh, I can tell you uh, from my experience with logs, if that helps. <laughs> so uh, in my experience, if you have something like, um, I don't know, uh, 50 million of a typical log typical, I don't know, 250-byte log, it will use uh, one gigabyte of memory or something like that. It, it depends so much on what you actually do with that. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't really... Thanks. You're welcome. Are there clients that can all discover all the nodes, given just one node? Uh, yeah, the Java client can do that. It will join the cluster as if it would be a node, only it won't. Uh, 
uh, it won't host any data, and then it will be aware of what's going on because it will retrieve all the updates from the cluster state. With something like uh, head plugin, would it see it? No, the head plugin works through HTTP, so it, you have to point it to a node that actually works, and then you will get everything. Uh, how does it scale with when you start adding millions of documents in an index and have things like engramming to a single character or document, if at all? Well, I haven't, I didn't have problems with scaling Elasticsearch, so I guess the answer is well. <laughs> but I don't know, really. Uh, it depends. So you haven't noticed any? Sorry? You haven't noticed any issues when you play around? Are you no. Like? I can answer this one. I mean, that particular thing is completely sort of Lucene level thing. So if you know how Solar handles it, Elasticsearch is going to act pretty much the same way as far as that particular use case goes. Because Elasticsearch itself doesn't really do anything other than use Lucene analyzers to chop up, you know, the, the input into engrams. Uh, in terms of low-level Lucene stuff, like uh, direct, the various directory implementations, codecs, and analyzers, and filters, is that the same as Lucene and Solar? A lot of it, yes. Or, or yes, are there any special ones up to come with Are there any uh, custom proprietary ones that come with Elasticsearch? Uh, or is it the ones that come Proprietary, no, because it's open source, so. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Again, so does it extend the basic functionality in any way, or it does that? Extend? Yes. For example, this facets that I showed you is is its own implementation, and there is going to be a, a new version really soon. Actually, the beta there's a beta already available, version 1.0. This one that I used was 0.90, and that has something that's called aggregations. And it allows you to do uh, a lot more statistics that you can currently do with facets. So and it's just an example. So what's the underlying Lucene implementation here? Like what's the version? Or four, yeah. It's for, uh, it's actually, I think, the latest or the okay. just, they usually keep up. Hi. Um, during the auto discovery yes. demo, you made mention of everybody needs to be on the same version. Yes. Which reminded me to ask about version management. As the next version comes out, what's the typical pattern for going from one version to the next? Uh, As in you set up a replica, or sorry, you set up a, a redundant one and... Yeah, that would be an option. And then just switch over? Yes, that would be an option or just shut, it depends on how much uh, um, availability you want. If you can afford to just shut down the cluster, up, upgrade everything and bring it back up, then that, that will work. Or you can just, I don't know, uh, uh, have, a, yeah, have a new cluster, point, point your clients to it, and just switch or something like that. So no notion just yet of like a rolling version of it? No, no, not yet. So when there's a version update, do we need to re-index everything? No, you don't. You don't. Even if it's a major uh, Lucene, for example, if when you, you it used uh, Lucene 3.6, I think it was before, and then it migrated to 4, uh, no, it just upgraded uh, everything. I think we should wrap up, but um, yeah, I want to actually. point out uh, one thing. Uh, there will be a talk on Elasticsearch as it's used at Tumblr, either at the next uh, month's meetup or the one after that, I'm not sure anymore. So if you're interested in Elasticsearch, you know, check out the meetup site and maybe they are using it at a pretty large scale, obviously, over there. So there will be you know, some juicy stuff, I imagine, from there. Their search, uh, the main search guys will be giving the talk. And you can also grab me here and ask me questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you.